Well, the example of censorship shows that you're dealing with an octopus that is sprawling uh, across the private sector and the public sector. It includes elements of academia. It includes the nonprofit sector. So sometimes what happens is the government doesn't want to be kind of caught to obviously fiddling with free speech. It seems too blatant a violation of the First Amendment. So the government agencies supply the sort of prohibited lists to the Stanford Internet Observatory or one of the right. nonprofit groups. And the nonprofit groups then do the handoff to the digital platforms. And so you, you begin to see you're not dealing with one thing, you're dealing with multiple uh, groups working in coordination. This is actually what interests me greatly. Even when you think about something, John, like the suppression of the Hunter Biden story, think right. about it. You know, if this were Stalinist Russia or Nazi Germany, you know, a minister of information would say, none of you can publish this. If you do, you're going to jail. But what we have is thousands of independent journalists working for hundreds of news organizations who, who aren't openly conspiring. I mean, they don't go on a Zoom call every morning at 7 a.m. and decide, let's all suppress the Hunter Biden story. And yet they act as if they did. They, in other words, there's a level of coordination that is almost the same as if they had sat down to conspire together, which they obviously haven't.